In this video we're going to look at hydrocarbons from crude oil. Now the other name for crude oil is petroleum. Often students mix this up with petrol. Petroleum is not petrol, it's crude oil. Now, crude oil is essentially a mixture of a large number of different hydrocarbons. So we'd better explain what a hydrocarbon is before going any further. So there's four drawn on the whiteboard for you. What have they all got in common? They all contain hydrogen and carbon only. So the first one we've got here is propane. So you can get a large number of different straight chained alkanes in crude oil. You can also get some branched alkanes. Um, this one is one, two, three, four, the longest chain, so it's but. Methyl group one number two, so that's two methyl butane. There's also um, a small number of cyclic hydrocarbons. So we've got cyclohexane drawn there. And there are also a small number of aromatic or arenes in crude oil. And that is a picture of benzene. Now, the majority of the hydrocarbons in crude oil are these straight-chained alkanes. So that's what we're going to focus on now. We're going to look at how the alkanes, these different sized alkanes are separated now and that's done by a process called fractional distillation and it would typically take place in something that looks a bit like this. So we've got crude oil which is fed in at the bottom of the tower and you can see that the temperature is approximately 350 degrees C. You notice at the top it's a lot colder, it's only 25 degrees C up there. So if you think about crude oil as this mixture of different hydrocarbons, what's going to happen at this temperature? Well, most of them will evaporate. There's a small number of molecules that don't evaporate, and this makes up the fraction that comes out at the bottom of the fractionating column. And these are known as the residue compounds or the residue fraction. So basically these are the very long chain hydrocarbons. They've got very high boiling points and 350 degrees is not enough to evaporate them. And so they remain liquid and fall to the bottom of this column. So if you can imagine all of the remaining hydrocarbons are in the gaseous state at the moment, there'll come a point where they would reach this level here. Any hydrocarbons that, are, that have a boiling point that corresponds to the temperature at this level, if you think about it, as soon as you get one degree below the boiling point, it will condense. And so the hydrocarbons that come out at this point have the next highest boiling points. And this fraction is known as the fuel oil fraction. So we've got, a, we've got less hydrocarbons now, so they rise because they're still gaseous at this point. And then the next set of hydrocarbons would start to condense here because they've reached their boiling point, they've reached they've reached a degree below their boiling point if you like and they would run out at this point and this is known as the diesel fraction and so on so I'll fill them in in a second but we'll go straight to the top now the very very small hydrocarbons would not actually condense at all and they would remain gaseous all the way to the top here and so these come out as gases and this is called the gas fraction. And you can see that I've populated the rest of the names of the fractions now. And in green you can see the approximate number of carbon atoms that would be present in each fraction. And you can also see an, a nice trend there. The longer the carbon chain, 
the higher the boiling point. And that's obviously because the um, long hydrocarbons have got more electrons in their molecules. And so the intermolecular forces, the van der Waals forces that exist between the molecules are stronger the more electrons that are present. And so more energy is needed to separate the molecules from each other. 